Ciao, Mabuhay! Greeting you all from Rome. You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. We are on the second Sunday of Lent, and today's Gospel narrates how Jesus is transfigured before Peter, James, and John. He who will suffer will end up glorious. On this occasion, the Father proclaimed Him as His Son, Jesus, the fulfillment of the law and the prophets, and being so, we should listen to Him. Friends, it is good to be reminded of the Transfiguration as we continue with our Lenten journey. Following Jesus in His self-denial would lead us to God. Doing the will of God transfigures suffering into life. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, Go forth from the land of your kinsfolk and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. All the communities of the earth shall find blessing in you. Abram went as the Lord directed him. The Word of the Lord. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the the Lord and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Oh, the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust. of the Lord are upon those who fear Him, upon those who hope for His kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of
A reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. Beloved, bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The Word of the Lord. Glory in self-denial. What is your reaction when you hear that expression, self-denial? In our age, in our contemporary age, the in thing is really self-affirmation. And so any indication that I would deny myself is already suspect. Well, of course, there is an unhealthy self-denial where I don't appreciate who I am or the gift that I have received from God. But there is a self-denial called love. And someone who just refuses to engage in self-denial might not know how to love. And it is this brand of self-denial that brings glory. In the first reading from the book of Genesis, the figure of Abraham, 75 years old. Wow, many people are already enjoying retirement at 75. And uh, we could surmise that Abraham was the same. And for a person of that age, where the, the desire is to, well, lead the remaining years of your life in a more stable manner. But God comes to Abraham and tells him to leave what every person counts as important, to leave his land and to leave his father's house. Remember, this is not just about property that would be left behind. This is saying goodbye to his whole heritage, to what his ancestors had done, and to what his father had bequeathed to him. For all we know, that is the fruit of his ancestors' labor, which the next generations, that of Abraham, uh, are supposed to enjoy and to take care of so that it could be passed on to the next generation. But Abraham is being asked to leave all of that and to leave at that age, 75. Where to? Well, if it is a better deal, why not? But he was told he would go to a land that God would indicate. So Abraham had no idea. See how, how much self-denial is being asked of Abraham. But if he would accept this suffering out of faith in God, and love of God, look at the glory that is promised. He would not be blessed in himself. That is included. But he will be the father of so many nations and many, many other people would be blessed in him. That glory, that glory that will come to Abraham, his immediate family, and to many other nations, they will have to pass through self-denial. Self-denial that is love. This poses a drama 
would Abraham accept the offer? Would he really say yes to God and at the same time say no to many, many good things that he is already experiencing? This is the drama. And at the end of the first reading, wow, Abraham obeyed God. He embraced that self-denial. He embraced that love, not knowing where God would lead him, but trusting. This is a character of Abraham. He trusted in God because he loved God. And he trusted in God's love for him. It's a different type of glory for this man. In the second reading, St. Paul reminds Timothy that he would need to bear his share of hardships because of the gospel. Wow. Timothy is an evangelist, a co-worker of the apostle. And they are supposed to preach the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. The glorious gospel of redemption and salvation. The glorious gospel of hope. But St. Paul, based on his own experience, probably reminds Timothy that the glorious message called the gospel must be proclaimed and lived in hardship. You cannot communicate the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ without embracing hardships. Jesus himself had to go through that. The mystery of the grace that we all enjoy because of Jesus. We don't merit it, according to St. Paul. The grace came to us not because of any merit on our part. It is pure grace. It has been in God's plan, hidden from all eternity, until the Savior is revealed to us. But remember, the glory of the Savior Jesus Christ was fully revealed to us in his resurrection from death. His own glory came to us, was recognized by the early disciples and by us only through his cross. It is by his cross, his death, that he was able to rob death of its power. It is by dying that he conquered death. It is by dying that he manifested the glory of God. And so the glory of the gospel is also maintained, lived, and proclaimed by those who are willing to share the cross and the hardships of Jesus Christ. Please don't run away. <laughs> don't be afraid. We are talking about love. We are not talking about self-flagellation or self-hatred. We are talking about love. And those of you who have experienced true love, you know self-denial. And in that self-denial, you experience the glory of love. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Matthew Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, 
Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord Glory in Self-Denial We have been reflecting on self-denial that is associated with love, not with a disregard for human dignity, not the lack of self-esteem, but love. Where there is true love, there is dying to self. And it is that loving dying to self that is an experience or that gives us an experience of glory, God's glory. We see this in the first reading, in the experience of Abraham. We see this affirmed by St. Paul to Timothy, that the glory of the gospel entails of the apostle the ability to share in the hardships of the Lord. Now the gospel for this second Sunday of Lent the transfiguration. Oh, Jesus being manifested to Peter, James, and John on the mountain in his glory, the glory of the Son of God, the voice from above affirming his sonship. Now, remember that before this glorious event, Jesus told his disciples that he would be arrested. He would be sentenced to death. He would be killed. But then he would rise again on the third day. We know the disciples of Christ. Many of them were looking for a political warrior type of Messiah. Probably many of them just got discouraged, disillusioned, listening to Jesus. I would not be surprised if some of them started entertaining the thought of leaving Jesus right there. Hey, wow, we thought he would liberate, liberate Israel. And we are following someone who is a miracle worker and who would really defeat all the occupying forces. But then he tells us that he would die. And on the cross, I mean, that's a humiliating death. This is not what we need at this moment. Now, given that context of the negative, possible negative effect of Jesus' revelation of his passion and death to the disciples, now comes the transfiguration but restricted to the three closest disciples of Jesus. They were allowed a heavenly vision of the glory of the Son of God, the glory of the one who will die on the cross. The transfiguration did not eliminate the cross. The voice from above did not say, okay, Peter, James, and John, you were quite disappointed so I will erase the cross, just the glory. No, nothing like that. What was being affirmed is that you see in the face of Jesus the glory of the Father, but it is the same face that will be disfigured by suffering and death. Look at his glorious face and imagine this glorious face suffering. Can you see 
both. Can you see his glory as he hangs on the cross? With Jesus was Moses. Moses, one of the most intimate friends of God, did not see the face of God. When God passed, God covered the face, the eyes of Moses. And Moses saw only the back of the shoulder of God. Another person with Jesus was Elijah. He also did not see God. He just sensed the presence of God in this tiny whispering wind. But now, Peter, James, and John are privileged. You will see the face of God the glorious face of God in my son, my beloved son. The face of Jesus is the face of the Father, always glorious. But that face of the glorious Father will be mirrored by the Son Jesus because he will deny himself. He will take up his cross and will show us the greatest love of all. The love that is willing to die for enemies whom he considers friends. That's the glory of self-denial. After the apparition, Jesus told Peter, James, and John to be quiet about it. Now, this is surprising No, you would have expected Jesus to, okay, now go to the other nine disciples, console them, tell them what you have seen, that the cross will lead to the resurrection. But none of that. He told them to keep quiet and to wait until the resurrection. This is part of the self-denial of Jesus. If the news had been spread before the crucifixion, and the resurrection, then many people would follow him. And even during the crucifixion, they will say, oh, this is just a joke. Let us wait for the glory. So Jesus did not want, again, a spectacle. Jesus wanted faith. Jesus did not want people who would follow him from a distance. He wanted loyalty. He wanted people who would also take up their cross and follow him. My dear brothers and sisters, our world is very much tempted to see glory without self-denial and cross. We want glory that is given only by comfort at all cost. But we have Jesus and the witness of martyrs. In our time here in the Philippines, you have the great witness of Monsignor Aloysius Schwartz, the founder of the Sisters of Mary and the Brothers of Christ, and the Boys Town, Girls Town, serving, having served thousands of poor children. He died strapped on a chair because of the deterioration of his muscles and nerves. But he counted it as not only solidarity with Jesus, but solidarity with the poor. He was reduced to poverty. But in his smile, in his uh, love, and his spiritual conferences, you see the glory of the Lord as he suffered. And one boy who died at the age of 12, a street boy, Darwin Ramos, of the Tulay ng Kabataan, very poor, living on the streets, getting sick. But he handled his sickness with so much faith and joy. Now he is a servant of God. And his virtues, heroic virtues, have been recognized. Glory in self-denial because of love. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. (music) 
we celebrate the Feast of the Transfiguration of Jesus on the 6th of August during the ordinary time, but during Lent, its account is also narrated. That the Transfiguration happens after Peter's confession that Jesus is the Messiah and Jesus' intimation of his death invites us to contemplate it in connection with the Paschal mystery. For one, it prepares his witnesses for what will happen at Calvary. The Catechism teaches, So the setting of the Transfiguration prefigured the Mount of His Crucifixion, which did not make sense yet to Peter, James, and John. We can understand them. Perhaps like the three, we would have also found ourselves asleep while Jesus was praying. We would be nowhere to be found at the Crucifixion either. As the Transfiguration revealed the Triune God, so would the coming passion and death of Jesus on the cross manifest the action of the Trinity. The Catechism says, The Transfiguration gives us a foretaste of the glorification of Jesus on Easter, yes, but he needs to go to Jerusalem to carry out his passion and the singular sacrifice of his body and blood. The vision of Easter light and glory is meant to strengthen the faith and hope of the disciples when they witness Jesus' passion. The Transfiguration prepares us to see God's saving action in the horror of the cross. Pope Francis tells us, Their brothers and sisters, the Transfiguration does not only point us to the glory of the Resurrection, it also points to the passion and death of Jesus as the way to that glorification. It helps open our eyes of faith to grasp the mystery of the cross with the promise of Easter glory. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, how has love for others transformed your sacrifices into joy? Papano binago ng pag-ibig sa kapwa ang iyong sakripisyo para maging kaligayahan? The second point is, how can we teach the youth that true love entails dying to self? Papano natin maituturo sa mga kabataan na ang tunay na pag-ibig ay nangangailangang mamatay sa sarili? Heavenly Father, You have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, Please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. 
Friends, we have heard Jesus speaking to us through the scriptures. It is time to go forth and fulfill his word. See you next week here on The Word Exposed. Stormy.